In workshop 2, we're going to look at setting up the project data. This is going to look at the background layers for our geo plan. Uh, we're going to look at importing ground models to our master database, uh, using properties and themes to display our objects within our network, and also committing the changes from our user files to our master database. So to begin looking at the background layers, we're going to add some of these to our GeoPlan. To do this, we right click in the GeoPlan and select GIS Layer Control. Here, we're going to select Add and navigate to our training data folder. We want to make sure that the file type is set to raster image and we're going to select Arial 1 and press Open. You'll see that our image has come up in our GIS layers and it's in the correct projection. Select Apply and then OK. You'll notice that we currently can't see the aerial image in our GeoPlan. So to bring it to view, we're going to right click, select View Entire GIS Layer and select that JPEG. You should now see the aerial within our GeoPlan. A good way to check that this is in the correct location is to right click, view online, and check it against the maps. You can see Google Maps is now displaying the object where I clicked to view the map. We can pan the site by holding in our mouse wheel and moving from right to left. And we can also zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel. Other ways to do this is to select the pan option from the toolbar. And also you can use the zoom icons to zoom in further or out. Another useful tip is if you have the pointer tool selected, you can press F8 and it will change to pan. These background layers can be saved for use at a later date or in another network. To save these to our model group, we right click, go New InfoWorks and select Layer List from the options. We're going to call this Aerial, Aerial Image and select OK. To remove the background layers, we can right click, go back to the GIS layer control and make it unvisible. We can also save this as a layer group by creating a new layer list. To get the image back, we can just drag on our layer list. Importing ground models can be very useful for looking at and interrogating our data. We can also be particularly useful for looking at the topography definition or also seeing if there are any bridge openings. To bring in some ground models, we right click on the model group, we go import InfoWorks ground model grid and we're going to select LiDAR files from a ground model folder. We're going to go through our data folder and we're going to select our one meter folder. This is the folder that contains our LiDAR grid files. Select the folder. We're going to give it a name to our ground model. We're going to ensure that our units are in meters and we're going to ensure that the floating point or mixed option is checked so that the decimal points of our Z values are included. And let's click OK. This may take a few moments for the ground model to load. Here we can see our ground model has now loaded in our model group. And to bring the ground model into our GeoPlan, we can just drag it on.
We can also view our aerial image draped over this ground model by selecting the new 3D network window. This will generate a new network, a new network window that we can pan around and view the aerial image draped over this ground model we just imported. We can right click, select properties, and we can also change the exaggeration. Right click to close out of the 3D window. We can also clear ground models from the GeoPlan by going to Network and Clear Ground Model. A significant proportion of the GeoPlan functionality originates from GeoPlan Properties and Themes dialog box. Here we can assign properties to various assets and we can alter and also create new sub-themes. We're going to bring back the, geo, uh, the ground model into the geo plan, and we're going to look at creating a new theme. To bring up the properties and themes, we right click on the geo plan and navigate down to properties and themes. We're going to go to the visual tab and tick on show ground level, flood depth, 2D depth. We're going to apply and we're going to save as a default for this network. Now we can come back into the GeoPlan and as I move my cursor over the ground model, we can see the Z elevations displayed down in the bottom. To change the color of the ground model or how it's represented, we right click again, go back to properties and themes. Under the objects layer, we're gonna scroll down to ground model and select edit under theme. Here, we can alter the way the ground model is viewed. We're going to change it to transparent. We're going to add a few more values and we're gonna define the range of which these values are shown. We can cycle through different scale types and we can also change the colors. Once you have found a style that you like, press apply and OK. We can save this as a theme object to bring in later or on other projects. And OK. We can also bring on other theme objects that have been saved earlier. We're going to bring on the RAS hydrology theme into our GeoPlan. You will notice a change in the ground model definition. Lastly, we're going to look at committing the changes to our master database. Every time there's a change in the network, and we commit this, a new version of the network is created. We can view these versions under the show commit history found under our uh, network and version control menu. So to begin committing the changes to our master database, we're going to right click on our network and we commit the changes to master database. Another way to do this is by selecting the commit changes icon in the toolbar. It is a good idea to give a good description in the comments. This will reduce the need for any model logs. A good example would be workshop two, set up geo plan and background data. Changes made to subcatchment 
defaults and select OK. We're going to say no to validating the network as we will do this later on. Once we've done that, we can show the commit history by right clicking on the network and selecting show commit history. And here we'll see the versions of the network that we currently have, as well as the changes made for each of those versions and comments made by the user. We'll close out of that window.